I'm Andrew, and I'm setting out to make better videos for diesel enthusiasts. Follow along as I review products, do how-tos, and share my personal trucks here on Just Diesels. Hey guys, what's up? Today in this video, we are gonna be talking about different diesel fuels. And as weird as that sounds, this day and age, there are actually a lot of different types of diesel fuel and it can get really confusing at the pump. So as a note, if you are standing at the pump right now trying to figure out if a diesel fuel is safe to run in your truck, um, there are chapters in this video. So you can either click in the description to skip to those chapters or you're gonna see the little playhead to skip to those chapters so you can skip through to the exact fuel that you're running, biodiesel, R99, R95, whatever, and you can see if it's safe to run in your truck. But Today, we're gonna to run through all the different kinds of fuel, what works, what doesn't, and what vehicles they are safe to run in. So to start out with, let's talk about biodiesel. Now, biodiesel is probably the most well-known alternative diesel to traditional ultra-low sulfur diesel. Now, biodiesel is unique and kind of particular in that it has oxygen as part of it. So all the other alternatives we're gonna talk about in this video do not have oxygen as a key component of the fuel, but biodiesel does. And that makes it a little bit trickier to run in vehicles. So for one, biodiesel is not chemically identical to traditional diesel. Uh, it's actually going to atomize differently when you spray it out of an injector. And most importantly, it is not as resistant to temperature change. So this is gonna be a key feature. If you have cold temperatures, things like that, biodiesel is the most prone to gelling or thickening. So that's something to watch out for. Now, different vehicle manufacturers are gonna have different things that they allow or different percentages of biodiesel that they allow in their vehicles. And this actually is frequently changing. So perfect example would be Cummins. So traditionally, if you go in your own user's manual for your truck, most trucks are gonna say that anything newer than 2007 when they uh, introduced DPF or diesel particulate filter systems cannot run anything higher than B5 or like B10 maybe. But if you go on Cummins website, now they are allowing B20. And that's because biodiesel has been a little bit uh, unpredictable in, in terms of its source and everything else. That's now more regulated, but when it was first introduced, there was a little bit of muddiness in terms of regulation and production. And so a lot of companies were wary to uh, you know, suggest compatibility when there wasn't a standardized procedure for production. As a general rule of thumb with biodiesel, you want to read your user's manual to double check if you can run biodiesel in your vehicle. And if in doubt, this is the fuel that you probably want to stay away from. So most vehicles you can run B20 without issue. Double check again, and you might wanna actually go on the vehicle's manufacturer website as that will be more up to date than the manual in your vehicle. But as a general rule of thumb, definitely avoid anything higher than B20 in vehicles that have diesel particulate filters or like more modern diesels. In some of the older vehicles, you can get away with it. For example, first gen, second gen Cummins, not super picky, you can run biodiesel. But again, you wanna be very conscious of temperature. You obviously don't wanna fill up with it and then go up to the mountains where it's you know negative 20 degrees because you will have a bad time. You will have fuel gelling 100%. So this is the fuel that you wanna be wary of and you wanna stay away from. And I've been noticing in California that there are a lot of places where you can't get anything other than B20 at like certain station ranges and stuff like that. So. Just be wary of that. You can probably get around on it, you know, B20 or whatever, but anything higher than B20, you probably wanna stay away from unless your vehicle is prepared for it, unless you've made modifications or unless it's an older diesel, like 7.3 Power Stroke, you know, 12 valve Cummins, stuff like that where it's low injection pressures, less picky fuel systems. Those you can probably get away with it on, but at new diesels, higher than B20, you probably wanna stay away from. Now the next group of fuels that we're gonna talk about is ADF or alternative diesel fuels. And there's actually a lot of fuels that fall under this category. For example, HPR, R99, R95. You're seeing a lot of these pop up, especially in California, as California, unfortunately, kind of mandates a lot of changes. In this case, though, it's actually helping us. So ADF, or alternative diesel fuels, think of it this way as basically it's chemically almost identical to diesel fuel, except that it's from a different fuel stock. It's a little more pure. And so what's happening is basically, it's like we're getting to rewrite the playbook on how to make diesel. So it actually has a higher centane rating, a higher lubricity, um, and it burns cleaner in vehicles. And so what's cool about this stuff is that it's like basically, if we got to remake diesel from the start again, what we would change to make it better. So in my personal view, this stuff is awesome. So let's kind of break down a few of the different types of this stuff and we'll get into that. So HPR or high performance renewable is found only at propel stations. This stuff is my absolute favorite fuel to run in the trucks. Uh, it is hard because it's only at propel stations in California, so it's a kind of limited uh, you know, area and availability, but this stuff runs better, burns cleaner, um, and runs smoother than any other fuel that I've run in my trucks ever. And that is true of everything back to my first gen, 
all the way up to a brand new diesel truck. But this stuff again is just, it burns super clean, super smooth. Um, in my trucks, the older ones that are pre-emissions, I'll actually notice a dramatic reduction in smoke when running this stuff. Um, I can get on it, lug the truck, and maybe just see a gray haze. Whereas running traditional ultra low sulfur diesel, I will have like, you know, noticeable black smoke out of the exhaust when getting on it. So this stuff is really cool and I highly recommend if you're in Southern California, if you have the ability to find a Propel station, uh, they actually have an app called the Propel app. Um, I use that all the time to try and track this stuff down because it just runs so nice in all the vehicles. On my VW actually, when I run this stuff, I can actually track regen intervals with my Edge Insight on that car. Uh, I actually notice a pretty large increase in regen intervals. So usually I run like somewhere around 200 miles or so between regens because it's a very small DPF. With running Propel, I'll hit 280, almost 300 miles between regens. So it's it's a big jump uh, because this stuff burns so much cleaner. Now I'm gonna lump R99 and R95 together. These two fuels are really common at 76 stations, but I'm seeing them pop up all over the place. And what those are is basically different blend ratios of the same fuel. So R99 and R95, what R99 is saying is it's pretty much all ADF. And R95 is saying it's probably 5% diesel. The rest of it would be ADF or alternative diesel fuel. Now these two fuels are completely safe to run on any generation diesel uh, from old to new. Uh, and they're actually gonna be better than traditional diesel. So again, just like HPR, these are going to have a higher centane rating. They're gonna have higher lubricity uh, and they're gonna be burning cleaner than traditional diesel fuel. Again, if you have a truck with a DPF on there and you can actually track your regen intervals, you'll probably notice a longer regen interval or basically less soot being built up in the DPF when running these fuels. Um, they really actually do burn cleaner. They are truly burning better. Um, again, this is basically like being able to rewrite the playbook on how diesel fuels are made to basically make diesel better. So it's chemically almost identical to traditional diesel, but it's becoming from a cleaner fuel stock. And again, and they're actually adding more lubricity to this than ultra low sulfur diesel. So it's actually going to be better lubricating to the injection pump, to the injectors and all that stuff. So really there's absolutely no downside. So if you can find R99, R95, do not be afraid of it. Put it in your vehicle, it will run fantastic. This is pretty much what I run my trucks on exclusively and my VW TDI on exclusively is R99, R95, and Propel HPR. Now, one final thing I wanna talk about is labels at gas stations. And this is where stuff can get very confusing. Now, the way this works is that there are federally mandated labels that need to be on fuel stations, particularly with diesel, to describe what kind of fuel you're actually getting at the pump. The issue is that these labels haven't quite caught up with what fuel is in them. Even more confusing that some stations have switched and they'll literally just layer the labels on top of each other. So it makes it way confusing to the customer to actually figure out what's going on with those labels. As short, there's gonna be two basic kinds of labels. One that are called biomass-based fuel or ones that describe biomass-based fuel and ones that describe biodiesel. Now the biodiesel name would traditionally be for a B10, B20, some biodiesel-based blend. And you wanna pay attention to that label because it'll probably tell you what percentage biodiesel is in that fuel. Like I said earlier in this video, if it's above 20%, avoid it in any new emissions truck. In the older trucks, you can get away with it. And again, avoid it altogether if you're going to a place with cold temperatures. Now, if you see a label that says biomass based fuel, that is gonna be describing HPR, R95, R99, one of those fuels. Now those are okay in any diesel vehicle of any age range. That is important. And sometimes what'll be really confusing is you'll see a station with both of these labels. Now in those situations, you don't actually know what's in that. And so those are situations where you might wanna just wave off and go somewhere else. And this is kind of something that I've been trying to do is basically, if I don't know what's coming out of that pump, I'm just gonna go to another gas station because there's probably one right across the corner who has a better label and I'm gonna give them my business and not the place that has five different labels stacking each other just being lazy. So that's my two cents. If you don't know what's in it, don't fill up, but as a general rule of thumb, basically what you're looking for is either biomass based fuel, and that is okay on any diesel vehicle, regardless of the name that they're giving it or branding they're giving it, biomass based fuel is gonna be this ADF or alternative diesel fuel that's totally safe. Biodiesel or anything that relates to biodiesel is gonna be not okay over 20% on pretty much any new emissions diesel vehicle. So hopefully that clears things up for you guys. If you have any questions, comment them down below. But if you're standing at the pump or you're just trying to learn what's okay to put in your diesel vehicle, hopefully this helps answer some questions for all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next video.